You're listening to Myers-Briggs Question Corner with Edith Richards. Today's topic is one that's just plain awful for anyone to deal with, but one I think deserves some attention, since most of us are going to have to deal with it at one time or another. Micromanaging. Now, the title of this podcast is specific to ESTJs and micromanaging, and this isn't to say that ESTJs are the most micromanagey of the Myers-Briggs types. Any personality type can micromanage for different reasons. ESTJ types, however, can be especially susceptible to this, especially undeveloped ESTJs. But let me give you a little background on the reason I'm bringing this issue up now. A few weeks back, a coworker who happens to be an ESTJ type was temporarily assigned to a project team led by a senior level executive, also an ESTJ type. The executive was former military and very regimented. He expected everyone to be in their seats at a certain time, work exactly eight hours, ask permission to leave the premises, document everything they're doing to the point that the documenting took just as long, if not longer than the actual work. This executive would also get up every 20 minutes like clockwork and ask each person on the team to report what they've been doing since the last check-in. In addition, each team member had a one-on-one meeting with the executive every three days to discuss progress on whatever task or goal they were working on. When my coworker's tenure on the project was up, the executive sat them down for a quote unquote exit interview, at which time the executive's demeanor completely changed. He was much more relaxed, he opened up, he listened, and he was generally congenial. So my coworker asked the obvious question Where was this personality when I was working on the project? The executive responded that he believes a chain of command, highly directive style of management is what will earn the most respect from his subordinates, and he needs their respect first and foremost. He believes it's his job to assign tasks and establish deadlines and timelines. Rules need to be in place, the leader makes the decision on who does what, and everyone has his or her part to work on. As long as everyone does their part on time, decisions will be quick and seamless, operations will go smoothly, and revenue will be generated. So essentially, this ESTJ executive was well aware of his micromanaging tendencies, but believed that this is the most efficient and productive way to get the job done. This is important to note because people who micromanage will do it for different reasons and may not be aware of their tendencies. Micromanagement has a negative connotation in today's workplace, but rarely does a manager or leader believe they're truly being a micromanager. And how does the Myers-Briggs come into play here? Well, ESTJs can often be micromanagers even though they don't intend to be. They're a type who wants to ensure things are being done properly, without mistakes, and they very much value efficiency, so they work hard to make sure everything is perfect. It can be hard for them to watch things fail. Now, this doesn't mean that every ESTJ has the same tendencies as the executive I described. Regardless of one's Myers-Briggs type, there may be other factors that affect how a manager or leader presents his or herself on the job. For more information on Myers-Briggs and leadership, please tune into my podcast, Which Myers-Briggs Types Make the Best Leaders, available on my website, www.atopcareer.com, iTunes, Player FM, or wherever you get your podcasts. So, ESTJs tuning in, have you ever been accused of being a micromanager? If so, you're in danger of disengaging your team. They're getting the message that nothing they do is ever good enough and you don't trust them or ultimately don't value them. This management style doesn't challenge or stimulate your team. It causes them to become dependent on you to approve their every move. And not only does that demotivate people, but it causes roadblocks for the organization or project. People who have this leadership style become obsessed with doing a job so well that they forget they have a team behind them and all the responsibility of leadership that goes with that. Essentially, getting the job done, being right, and being in control become more important than the people actually doing the work. Another issue is that micromanaging causes burnout in yourself too. 
Nobody can sprint that long without consequences. ESTJs and other Myers-Briggs types tuning in, here are some signs you may be a micromanager along with some solutions. You may be new to a leadership role. When supervisors are unsure of themselves and their team, they may try to maintain as much control as possible, believing they need to know every detail in order to perfect the final product. Or you're a seasoned manager who's scared of losing control. You monitor what each person is doing. You ask to be CC'd on every email and watch every task. Maybe you're constantly asking for updates. If this is the case, you're inviting yourself to be over-involved in the details to the point that you're losing sight of the bigger picture. Here's a tip. Focus on outcomes, not activity. Deadlines, not timelines. Once everyone is in sync with expectations, there's no need to micromanage. Now, perhaps you're a perfectionist. You don't believe your employees will get the task done or at least won't get it done in a way that's up to your standards. Essentially, you're never satisfied. People who do this have trust issues. Great leaders seek to empower their teams, and part of that is allowing your team to learn and grow. That requires you to allow them a certain amount of autonomy. Giving more responsibility to your people might be difficult at first, but it's really the only way to build an innovative and cohesive team. Speaking of which, all this starts with effective communication. Great leaders, regardless of Myers-Briggs type, who are confident, seek out input from their employees. They spend time getting to know their employees, especially on an individual level in terms of his or her strengths. This can help foster an understanding of how each person wants to be managed. Those leaders play the role of a facilitator, not a task master. They let their team members know that they can come to them with problems or questions. This creates a culture of trust, and employees who trust you rather than fear you as their leader will be much more productive and efficient because they'll be happier. Face it, nobody is going to feel motivated to work with you if all they hear is criticism. A little encouragement goes a long way, and it's free. Now, if you are the one dealing with a micromanaging boss, here are a couple of strategies. First, analyze the situation. Is it really micromanaging? And if so, what does that look like? Try to figure out what the micromanager's needs and fears are. Is it a fear of losing control, failure to delegate, need to be seen as others as competent, need to win? Whatever information you can glean is going to help you in determining how to handle the situation. You also need to be honest with yourself. Do you need micromanaging? Is your performance off? Are there things you could have done better? If there are problems you're facing, are you able to talk to your boss about them? If so, be professional and let your boss know that you want to improve your performance. This puts the focus on your professional growth and development and lets your boss know what you need in order to be your best self. Now that you have an idea of what your micromanaging boss's needs are and you're comfortable with the fact that you're doing your best, It's time to face the challenge and prove you don't need to be micromanaged. Questions like, how comfortable would you be with me taking the lead on this? And what's my area of autonomy? What are my parameters? Anticipate your boss's concerns and have your responses ready. If you show that you're on top of things, if you provide regular status reports or updates without your boss having to ask, your boss may back off. Remember that movie, The Devil Wears Prada? Anne Hathaway's character did just that. She anticipated what her boss wanted and became that person, ultimately becoming the favored employee. Another option, and this is one I'd proceed cautiously on, confront your boss about his or her behavior in a professional manner. It's important first to assess the potential risk in doing this in the workplace culture, however. On the other hand, your boss may be completely unaware of his or her tendencies towards micromanagement. If this is the case, make sure you're calm and your boss is calm when you decide to have this conversation. There's no use in letting emotions and frustrations get out of control. 
If your boss is a logical person, he or she will take to heart what you say, but you have to be ready to accept that he or she may also see this as a challenge to his or her authority, and that may not go over well. Finally, you can just step aside. If your boss insists on doing the work him or herself, let them, if you can get away with it. This strategy worked for me when I had a colleague who insisted on doing things her way, not allowing me to contribute. I watched to make sure I knew how to do the tasks so I could be there to pick up the pieces if and when the train wreck happened, but I let her do the actual work. And this part is key. I thanked her for her guidance. Yes, I was being somewhat disingenuous, but it filled her need for control and for her to believe she was the benevolent leader. I was able to practice my diplomacy and not get so stressed out. It was really a win-win for both of us in many ways. Now, back to the situation I mentioned at the beginning of the episode with my coworker and the micromanaging executive. It's very interesting to me that both of these individuals are ESTJs, and it's a great example of two people of the same Myers-Briggs type approaching work very differently. Ultimately, my coworker decided cutting losses was the best option. There was a chance to work with a new group of people on a new project, but it proved not to be the right fit. So thankfully, experience was gained and it was time to move on. To sum things up, ESTJ types inevitably climb to leadership roles due to their strengths of focusing on details, careful clarification of roles and resources, and establishing timelines and deadlines for maximum productivity and efficiency. However, they do have a tendency to be obnoxious micromanagers, especially if they're less mature or developed, or if they're under a lot of stress. They can become bulldozers, exerting their will in trying to be Mr. or Miss Everything, oblivious to the havoc they create with their team. This domineering behavior isn't always indicative of ESTJs, however. Any Myers-Briggs type can be a micromanager. Note, if you're a manager or leader and you find your people are slowly leaving or not producing work as they used to, it's time to take an honest look in the mirror. Are you the problem? Thanks for listening to this episode. If you'd like to hear more or you'd like to submit a question yourself, then you can find us at www.atopcareer.com. Until next time. MBTI and Myers-Briggs are registered trademarks of the MBTI Trust.